So at long last, I beat Elden Ring. I also beat Melania, who I believe is the hardest boss in the game. There's probably a couple more bosses I need to beat that I just didn't come across, like the Lich Dragon. I did also beat Rickard and some of the harder dungeon bosses, like uh, the Twin Crucible Knights, which I found quite difficult. But yeah, I beat the game and I beat the hardest extra boss. So I figured it's time to maybe give a final review of the game now that I've played through it. I haven't gotten through all the content yet. I've gone through a lot of it, though, just because of how big this game is. Um, I'm sure there's like whole areas I haven't even found yet because Elden Ring is a truly massive game. And I guess before we get into my uh, opinion on the game, I'll just show you what my build is. So I did a lot of side stuff as the game went on. Because uh, I suck at these games, so I wanted to level a lot. So I'm probably over-leveled for where most people will be at the end of the game. I'm 157. Granted, I gained about 10 levels from beating some of the uh, post-game bosses, like uh, Millennia. But yeah, I have 56 Vigor, 60 Strength, 60 Dex, and 58 Endurance. And I have the Great Rune Equip that gives plus 5 to all stats which I don't have activated at the moment. And then the equipment I used for my build uh, was the Cold Grave Scythe. Now, I just found this to be an extremely useful weapon. It had a good move set. Um, it didn't require very much to use. It had natural bleed, which is really good in this game. And if I put on the uh, frost buildup, it had a very high rate of frost. So it did the two damage effects that I believe do a percent of health rather than an actual uh, relative to your attack or something to that effect. So between the two of those, I was able to melt a lot of the more tanky bosses, uh, like the fire giant I blew through. Um, I think it's Margit, um, who also has a lot of health. And I got this fairly early in the game, so just a lot of the tanky bosses I just kind of blew through uh, using this. And then the other weapon I used was the Anspa Rapier, which does Scarlet Rot buildup, and I attached the Poison buildup to it. So it it did two DOTs to enemies, so I would hit the bosses with this a couple times, and then switch to the Cold Grave Scythe. And once I started to get them up, they just did a fuck ton of damage. Uh, so I found the best armor set in the game to be the Tree Sentinel. Uh, there's lighter armors and heavier armors. Part of it is just a certain amount of fashion souls. Like, the Bull Goat armor is a lot better in terms of its strike damage resistance. But, I mean, look at it. It looks, it looks horrible, so... I thought the Tree Sentinel was the best uh, heavy armor, just in terms of how it looked. Although the Crucible set's pretty cool. Unfortunately, a lot of the cooler looking armors in this game are just not very good if you're going for a tank build. So I just really wasn't able to use them, which kind of makes me sad, but it is what it is, I suppose. Um, so that was the uh, equipment that I used. Uh, the talismans I found were the most helpful were uh, Blessed Dew, which I got very early in the game, which I think is 2 HP a second, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I find it extremely useful to have passive HP regen, especially in an open world game, because you're often going to get into like a, a short fight, maybe take one or two hits, and then while you're exploring, your HP will just top up and you don't have to use your Estus flasks. Uh, Green Turtle Talisman, faster stamina regen is always good. Uh, I only got this at the end of the game. Uh, Erd Tree's Favor, which I think is it's plus, I think on average, 10 to uh, everything. I also would use the uh, Great Shield Talisman quite a bit, uh, among some others. And I normally use the Dragon Crest, so I got my resistances up really high. Um, so even endgame enemies I was able to tank. And if you look at it, I got my to do like 700 plus damage per shot with the uh, Great Scythe. But yeah, like you can see, the Great Scythe has a pretty good uh, move set. So that was my build. Now the game as a whole. So 
I made a lot of criticisms of this game when it initially came out. Um, some of them I've revised my opinion on. A lot of them I've maintained my opinion on. I maintain that the fall damage is the single biggest problem in this game. And I've said that from the beginning. People have said you can throw stones to see if a fall can kill you. I just don't think that that's fun. Not because of any challenge thing, but you're exploring the game. You want to play the game. And you have to constantly stop and fucking throw stones and try to figure this out and do like the math. And I just really don't want to do that. I want to play the game. I don't want it to be an Einstein project to do something very basic. I think this game would have been much better if they had it just had Sekiro system, where if a fall would kill you, it just puts you back up on the uh, cliff. I don't think it's fun. I think it, it ruins certain levels of this game, especially since, as with the other Souls games, it's, it's often unclear if you can go to a certain area. Like, sometimes you will fall through platforms, and I get that it's trial and error, and I get that a lot of people like that, but I don't, and I just find it frustrating. The platforming on the whole isn't that bad. They were merciful enough to give Torrent a double jump, which really helps out given how kind of imprecise sometimes it can be when you're jumping around. Once they did the patches, it got a lot better because there was a lot of input delay and controls getting dropped before they uh, patched the game. I also maintained my criticism that upgrade items are too hard to come by, especially early game. And FromSoft seemed to have agreed with that because one of their patches added more of them in early game. Um, it's So I think, let's just maybe talk about the game in, in relation to the franchise. So I think it does take elements of all three games. I think the combat is a bit more like Dark Souls 2 in that it's a bit slower and more methodical. I'm sure people will disagree with me on that. Also just that they kind of went for quantity over quality uh, with some of the bosses. And I, I just, I recall DS2 having slightly more open areas than the, the other two games. I could be wrong. Armor actually doing something, I think, is probably the best aspect of this game. And in, it, in that, it's a lot like DS1, where Armor actually did something. Poison, this game, I find, still kind of sucks, but it's better than in DS3. So they took that aspect, and then they took a lot of the um, just quality of life improvements from DS3. Obviously, the graphics look a lot like DS3. Some of the simplifications, like having the single hub where everything is and having one blacksmith and not having a bunch of them and simplifying how the merchant system works and a bunch of stuff is good. The quest system in this game is still shit, but it's way, way better because I don't think quests time out nearly as much. And occasionally they'll even tell you where you're supposed to go. I don't get why they can't just have a journal system in this like every other open world game. I, I don't know if that's just trying to make it harder or something like that. But that would be really nice. Um, however, for whatever reason, they just don't want to do that. So. so that's good. So like I said, it takes elements, I think, from the previous games, probably less so Sekiro, because this is more of an RPG. But something that is different is I find this a lot more build dependent than the previous games in terms of your personal stats. Like, in some of the previous games, uh, a lot of the builds would be very much dependent upon a single weapon. But in this one, I think it's a bit more geared towards an archetype. Um, and something I like is they made non-dex builds viable. Because I found in DS3, and even in DS2, the most competitive build tended to be dex builds where you wore no armor. And it was like a bleed katana build or something like that. And they would just nerf armor and shields and heavy weapons until dex builds were the only thing that was viable. And that kind of took me off guard because I'm used to more in, in the DS games. Areas are somewhat level dependent, but I find not nearly as much as in this game because the game's a lot longer and you can upgrade weapons to 25 instead of like 10 or 15 in the first game. And because armor actually does something... And the talismans, I find, do more than they have since DS1. That going to a higher level area often means you're just going to get blown out. 
really quickly. Likewise, if you're having trouble with a boss and you skip it and come back, I find in the previous games, the boss gets easier with better equipment, but not like super easier. In this game, there were some bosses like the Twin Crucible Knights who I rage quit. And then I came back later in the game and I just blew through them as if they weren't even there. Because I went from doing like 300 damage to doing 700 damage and I had twice as much HP. And I just kind of blew through them. And that's just not something I'm really used to. I mean, obviously, especially in DS1, I found equipment upgrades did a lot. Like, once you first reached the uh, Andre of Astora and you could upgrade your weapons to even plus three, they became much, much better. And their damage went up. But I find especially in kind of two and three, it didn't really do as much. Um, something else that I, I kind of found in this game is... Uh, Heavy weapons just suck. I find they don't do very much damage. They're obviously very heavy, and they're just not really worth it. Because they don't do significantly more than, like, my scythe does. So there's no real point in using them. I'd rather wear heavier armor and be able to tank more hits than do slightly more damage. Um, I guess how it is. Shields in this game are actually really good. I like some of the mechanics. They simplify dramatically, which I like. So now shields have guard boost, which I think is it reduces stamina cost by 77%. And if you get it above 100, then it will reduce. Then you will not take stamina damage. And I think enemies will just bounce off your shield. So if you want to do a shield build and use barricade shield and use a couple other things, uh, like maybe the talisman, you can make a shield build and you can use that and it's very effective against a lot of the bosses in the game. So that's good. Um, but going back to the previous thing, Melania is supposed to be the hardest boss in any FromSoft game. But like I said, I was a level 150 and had plus 25 weapons when I fought her. So I died the first time just because I didn't really know what I was doing. The second time I just kind of blew through her and she wasn't that difficult just because my damage output was so high. Also, the summons range, and this is once again, this game has a bit of a, an inverse difficulty curve, which is a problem I have with a lot of the FromSoft games, where it starts out a lot harder at the beginning than it gets later game. Because eventually you'll get stuff like Mimic Tear Ashes or um, probably my favorite summon, uh, Black Knife T Tishi, who just get exponentially better. Like, I find when they're like four or five, they suck. But once they get up to nine or ten, they just become god tier. Like, Mimic Tear Ashes and uh, Tishi can pretty much solo fairly weak bosses by themselves. And for some of the um, bosses, like when I was fighting Melania, I used I summoned uh, Mimic Tear Ashes, and we just stun locked her with the because we were both using the scythe that does the uh, bleed and frost, and we just stun locked her and just kept hitting her with that, and it just melted her HP and she wasn't able to do anything. And I'm not complaining about that. My issue is more just that it goes from sucking to being really good really fast. And I just find with a lot of things in this game, until you get like an, if you're like a faith build, until you get an Ashes of War that does sacred um, buff, uh, sacred infusion or lightning infusion, you just kind of suck because your stats are just very maligned. But once you get kind of a weapon that fits your build, you just kind of become god tier. So I don't know if that's really a complaint or not. That's just something I find different from the previous games, and I'm sure a lot of people like that. I have mixed feelings about it. I think the difficulty could have maybe been spread out a bit more over the course of the game. I don't even know if the beginning of the game is necessarily hard. It's just it's difficult to kind of adopt a specific play style early game, and maybe that's what it's supposed to do. But I generally have a pretty consistent play style when I play these games. I normally will be a a tanky build with a um, shield and some sort of pole arm or sword. Which, I mean, if you want to say that that's like kind of a boring or cheap build, I don't know. It's just how I like to play this game. 
I like to be able to hit things with my uh, sword, and I like to be able to block, and I like to be able to do a lot of alpha damage. Um, so there's that aspect of it. The story in this game, I would say, because I've gone through and I've read some more, the story is a lot more straightforward, and it's much more clear how things were laid in. You don't have a lot of the nonsense you have in the Souls games with, like, 20 different timelines and stuff happening in, like, five different worlds and no one knows what the fuck's going on. There's a pretty clear central story and everything's related pretty clearly into it. And I didn't really... I was replaying the game and just doing... Now that I kind of am up on the lore, it's, it's not too hard to follow the dialogue and where things relate. And that is a bit more like DS1, because DS1 had a pretty clear central narrative, and it was pretty straightforward how things related into it. When you get into 2 and 3, it gets a lot more befuddled, and you don't know what's going on. That being said, I do like the lore of the, the Souls games more. I don't know if it's because it's more berserky or grimdark, or... I find kind of the philosophy of light and dark, even though this game does kind of have that more interesting, but I do like the um, uh, the lore in those games better, even if it is more confused and more poorly written. I don't, I haven't read too much of Martin's stuff. I can kind of see aspects of his, um, I can't really specify them, but there are aspects of his uh, fingerprints in this, but overall I don't really think it's... Um, that noticeable. I will say though, I give them props for doing something slightly different um, and trying to make the storyline a bit more accessible than the like convoluted mess it was in the previous games. So maybe to just finish up, I'm going to talk about the different areas and what I thought about them. Uh, Limgrave, I thought was a really good starting era. It's a somewhat generic medieval style fantasy setting with a bunch of um ruins and stuff so i thought it was a good area to start out most of the enemies are humans here you don't have too many like weird bosses you have to deal with um it's just kind of a fun time roaming around uh Kaled i really hated it's not it's not even because of the difficulty of it or anything like that i'm just someone who's really easily grossed out by mold and the whole thing is just covered in mold and decay, and it just kind of made me a bit nauseous. That's not really me, like, attacking the game or anything. That's just kind of a personal issue. Uh, Lyrna of the Lakes... Uh, Lyrnia of the Lakes is probably my favorite area, because it's Temperate Rainforest, which is my favorite biome. It's just it's cool to have a water level that's not a swamp. And I like the architecture of the Academy... It's just, it's good fun. Altus is just kind of in between. It's kind of boring. Uh, I don't really have anything to say about it. It's just kind of there. Uh, the Volcano Manor is probably my... Maybe I'll just go to the Volcano Manor while we're talking. It's probably my single favorite area in the game. Uh, not necessarily the way around it, but within the building itself, I just thought was really cool. Uh, just because of the uh, lighting and the design of the place. So we're just going to finish loading. The load times, I, I feel, have gotten a lot better after they patched it. That could just be me getting used to them, but I, I say that as it's taking a long time to load. Load. Yeah, so I just find this area really cool looking. Um, I guess you could say it's kind of gothic. I'm not sure if Victorian would be the right way to describe it, but... I just really dig the um, the ambiance. The idea of having like this gothic mansion built above a volcano is pretty cool. And then you have like the dining room and stuff. Uh, just left that behind. So Volcano Manor is probably my favorite area. Uh, Shaded Castle was okay. Um... That area was kind of okay. The royal, the the imperial, the, the royal capital is pretty cool. It's kind of like a cross between Anne Orlando and maybe Drang Laic Castle, uh, which is good. I like this level a lot. Plateau of the Giants, I, Mountain Top of the Giants, I didn't really like. It's very much like the uh, Ivory King DLC. Uh, I just found it a little difficult to figure out how to get around. 
Oh, uh, this was a cool area. The, um, I forget what it's called. The, uh, the tree island in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Crumbling Farum, uh, Azula was really cool. Uh, it very much, it felt like you were at the Kiln of the First Flame from Dark Souls 3, but you were able to move around in it. And it was just a really cool level, uh, of just kind of like, floating platforms and stuff like that. And then I guess the final area in the game is the destroyed Royal Capital. Uh, and I thought that was a really good level as well. So overall, I'd say most of the levels are pretty good. Uh, I think Alta's Plateau is not very good. I didn't really like Mountaintop of the Giants, but... And I didn't like Caleb. That's not because of anything they did wrong in designing it. I just don't like mold. But uh, yeah, Limgrave was good. Lyurnia was good. Uh, the underwater, the underground levels kind of varied from good to bad. Uh, I don't have a lot of complaints about them, but overall, I'm going to say despite its pro its problems, and this game does have a lot of issues, uh, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie, and I don't think it's for everyone, and I definitely think you should probably use a guide if you're not very good at it. I'm probably going to give it 9 out of 10, uh, just because... They put an effort, and so few AAA games these days even try to make it a decent, polished product. And they tried, and as far as a FromSoft game goes, they, like, did a little polish at least. So, credit where credit's due. Good game. I'd recommend it. Uh, if you just be warned, it might get frustrating, particularly at the beginning.